Continua from Audio Damage is much like Alto in that its sound engine is very influenced by the analog world, but it gives you a distinctly digital experience in the software view. So it has a really great animated interface, and it gives you a lot of complexity in its sound with three oscillators that can be continuously shaped. So there's a lot of uh, time variant timbres that you can get out of this. And uh, unlike the Alto engine, which is you know, in a lot of ways quite faithful to its Buchla underpindings, uh, Continua just kind of gives you these three oscillators and gives you as many uh, modulators as it can fit in the window and lets you have at it. So you can get really complex textures that have a big analog sound, something like you would get with like a sequential circuits or Dave Smith instruments, as it was previously known. So let's take a look at how we can apply MPE to the different parameters in Continua and how we set it up. When you first add Continua to a Bitwig Studio project, if you're using that DAW, you'll want to make sure that you turn on MPE. Now, we already saw we had to turn on the MPE switch in Bitwig. Um, the other thing we need to do is go to the settings and make sure that MPE is on. And if you would like, you can add aftertouch smoothing, which, which can uh, take care of some of the jitter that you might hear in some cases. Um, I just add a little bit and I don't want to add too much latency. And then pitch bend override, again, you may want to activate that so uh, you can control the pitch bend in each Continua instance. And finally, you'll probably want to save your startup settings so your settings load every time uh, the same way when you put Continua in your projects. So once that's done, you're ready to start exploring. Now, here's the default preset. It's a just sort of big polyphonic sound. And uh, what's interesting about Continua is that the shapes can be continuously uh, modified. So if we go ahead and uh, mute those other ones, we'll just listen to one oscillator. You can hear that there's quite a variety of sound just from a single oscillator. And by modifying the warp and the skew and the shape, every oscillator suddenly becomes really dynamic. So traditionally this type of stuff is done with LFOs, but we have our fingertips on uh, multiple notes that we can control these things with. So how do we do that? Continua makes this pretty simple. You just right click on any parameter and it pulls up the modulation window. Then you hit plus and you add whatever modulation you want, whether it's an LFO or from the keyboard. So in this case, I'm gonna apply uh, CC74 pitch bend and aftertouch to the warp shape and skew. So we'll go ahead and add an aftertouch parameter and we'll just make it increasing. So the value will increase for uh, uh, oscillator warp when I press down. And similarly, we can do the shape, um, and I'm gonna do these full range uh, with CC74. That's the vertical. They use CC74 in audio damage projects um, instead of calling it Y or calling it timbre. Um, just use the straight up uh, technical term for it. And again, I'll make this increase. So just by applying pressure on that note, and uh, moving up and down on it, I get a lot of variety. And finally on the skew, I'll just right click and use the pitch bend. And again, I'll make it sort of a large value so we can really hear what's happening. Um, and in this case, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and swap the piano for something that has a bit more room. And I'll take that and see what happens. <laughs> Now the cool thing is, is at this point where we've sort of created a complete waveform explorer for Continua, so we can uh, find an, a particular setting for the oscillator if we wanted. Um, this would be a nice way to do some design. If we particularly like that setting, then we can just kind of lock it in. That's what it's going to be like at its sort of initial point. And then we can do that for all of the oscillators as we wish. And of course you can control filters, 
there's a lot of different settings for doing filters in parallel or series. You have d different types of uh, filters in the two pole and four pole. You can, of course, mo morph from band pass, low pass, and uh, high pass filters. So kind of like the uh, Oberheim SEM style. And uh, so there's a lot of opportunities to shape your sound. And of course, there's an effects section. And um, unlike what we had with Falcon, where we couldn't really apply our gestures uh, to the effects, we can do that in uh, the audio damage project. So if we turn on... You're hungry? Yeah. Okay, can you give me five minutes? Unlike what we saw with UVI Falcon, where we couldn't apply our MPE gestures to the effects, uh, we can do that. Uh, they still act monophonically, and it just takes the last finger that you've uh, put down as the controller. But the cool thing is, is you can do it. So let's go ahead and add a, uh, like, whatever. We can add CC74 to the mix. And then we can hear what that sounds like. <laughs> And you can hear how it's the last finger that I that I put down. The most recent finger is what's actually controlling that. So you can see that's pretty powerful how you can use that reverb to uh, control the sound in addition with all the other timbral things. So I like being able to do that. Um, so if you don't want to start from scratch from the default, the cool thing is, is it ships with some MPE presets. Um, I do know that in the artist section under Sonal System, uh, Sonal System has done a lot of uh, sound design using the Buchla Thunder overlay. So if we take a look at some of these Sonal System presets, these already have MPE built in generally. So this has the pressure applied to gain, so you can kind of massage the sound out and then it gets brighter as you move up and down. Um, I have these hex pads. Uh, by default, usually these are just for controllers, but I have these as low notes. So there's clearly a lot of really uh, nice um, ambient sounds you can get out of this. One of the things I think about when I think about analog is I think fat. So uh, we can also use Continua to kind of create some really big dance music sounds. So with dance music, a lot of times what you're doing is sequencing and maybe not playing quite as much. Um, so what I did in this case to create a um, bass line is I went to Continua and I just, in this case, I used a um, preset. So uh, this preset is one of the... Uh, factory presets for bass. We can hit text to listen to that. And I kind of like the bendiness of it and that had a good sort of electronic uh, dance music feel. Instead of trying to play and find the sound, what I'm what I did is I kind of played a bass line uh, that seemed reasonable. Um, I kind of set up a your basic sort of four on the floor beat and uh, played in a bass line and added uh, gestures. So in the case of Bitwig, we can take a look and we can see all of our gestures for the timbre um, and velocity. Velocity, I just kind of maxed everything out. Um, and for our notes, and then you also see the, the pitch bend for each note. Um, but what I was concerned about was the timbre and how I could modify that. So instead of trying to play it, um, I just went to uh, the sequence and let that run and then just tried to start figuring out like what I wanted to apply those uh, CC74 messages to. So I just went in and started playing around with some of the filter settings. And since those envelopes are just playing back, I can kind of really dial it in how I like it. And eventually, um, by doing that, I arrived at something that was uh, a little bit more uh, interesting than just a basic sound. Um, and in this case, I have the effects going to uh, the mix on the reverb. So I'm not really using the reverb to give it space. It's more, almost more of like a chorus. So 
So in this way, MPE doesn't always have to be about what you're playing uh, on the controller. It can be what you sequence and then start to add things that you like using those sequence parameters. And in the case of some of these other tracks, I just played them directly and used some of the presets that were already there. Um, and this was, again, using one of the Sonal System ones because I knew the MPE was in there. And it just kind of has that kind of a nice shimmering sound to it. And uh, just added that on top. MPE is not just for playing things with your hands. It's also really great for getting things in the hands, editing them, and then continuing to shape your sound to what you've recorded. Continua is really great for this because it offers so many timbral options. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what you do with Continua and what sort of sounds you come up with. <laughs>